The Uniswap Foundation released its bridge assessment report recently, a major community undertaking that saw the decentralized exchange formally examine some of the core infrastructure powering its governance process. Wormhole and Axler took the top honors after a months long assessment. Joining us now to discuss is Axler CEO and co founder Sergey Gurbanov. Welcome, Sergey. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to be here. All right. So the Uniswap Foundation analyzed six leading crypto bridge providers and approved Wormhole and Axelar. Uh, you told Coindesk that you were surprised at how thoughtful the report was. What did you mean by that? Yeah, no. So I think uh, it's clear that we're seeing decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, you know, starting to challenge uh, centralized exchanges. Right. Um, but in the past, they simply couldn't do that um, because they didn't have robust decentralized cross chain support for governance, for cross-chain swaps, and so on and so forth. And so I think the report was really well done in the sense that it analyzed very deeply a lot of the providers to try to understand what are the security guarantees that they provide, what are the decentralization properties that these providers provide, and what are the best solutions that can actually solve some of the needs for these decentralized exchanges to be able to stand like on par with um, you know, centralized exchanges and support all of these cross-chain functions. So uh, bridges seem to be the big problem here, uh, or at least for, you know, there was a rash of, uh, of hacks of bridges going on. What, what were the, uh, the fault points, if you will, uh, throughout? Is there a common theme that, that happened here um, uh, that's kind of led to this situation where, you know, you have very few people that are, are approved? Yeah, the common theme is uh, centralization, right? Uh, centralization. Uh, kind of a, behind many of the bridge protocols in the past has led to numerous attacks, right? When you have a few nodes that are controlling your bridge uh, that are doing all the validation, it's very easy to compromise them. It's very easy to corrupt them. It's very easy to take them down. It's very easy for those nodes to push upgrades that lead to sort of uh, vulnerabilities, right? And uh, attack surfaces. And so I think throughout the whole history of Web3 and blockchain, what we have learned is that decentralization is the key to secure this infrastructure, right? That's what allows us to be robust, decentralized, continue to function 24 seven. And so I think that's what we have seen again in the Uniswap Foundation report is that they value decentralization, they value kind of true robustness and uh, security comes as a result of that. You know, bridges are kind of like the backbone to this interoperable future we always talk about when we talk about mainstream adoption. You say that bridges need to be more decentralized for us to get there. How how long until until we can achieve more decentralized bridges that are more secure so that we can have this interoperable future? Yeah, so protocols like Axler today are already fully decentralized, right? So it's a it's a proof of stake network. Anybody can join, anybody can validate, anybody can participate in it. So we know how to do this. It's just not an easy thing to do. Uh, and at the same time, what we're starting to see now is kind of all the centralized exchanges actually going and uh, figuring out how to build decentralized backends on the backend, right? So we're seeing players like Coinbase, you know, working on projects like Base in order to facilitate a lot of the backend activity, make sure it's decentralized, make sure it's you know, transparent and robust. And they'll need these types of decentralized, you know, bridges and interoperability protocols to support the same types of functions as they could offer in their front ends. And so I think that's what we're going to start to see over the next few years is the convergence of kind of decentralized, you know, exchanges and backends converging with centralized front ends for simple user experience and for simple interaction. And hopefully we'll get the best of both worlds. This is kind of a basic question, but it, but it, for a lot of people, it, it's a it's a question nonetheless. Uh, why why do we need why do we need interoperability? What what exactly is it that needs to be done? Why does this need to be done? Why can't we just all use one uh, platform or, or another? Why do we need why do they need to talk to each other? What what would you say to them? The reality is that for the ecosystem to scale and continue to grow, you're going to need to have different platforms, right? You're going to need to have different applications that live in different places, that have their own communities, that have their own kind of a technical properties, right? But um, players like centralized exchanges have been offering interoperability for us, right? It's not that we didn't have interoperability. They just all have been offered through centralized front ends, like exchanges, like, you know, centralized uh, money markets that led to, you know, a lot of the bad results throughout, uh, you know, the last years that we have seen. And so interoperability now, decentralized interoperability across the chains, it serves, serves there as a replacement that we can now put 
behind the centralized front ends to offer the same types of functionality where you can just swap a token from one chain for a token on another chain, right? That should be a simple function. But doing that function, you don't want to have to take unnecessary risks in the process, right? Or take as minimal risk as possible. And so you need these decentralized kind of a backend connectivity tissues. And those are that's what interoperability really means here is to be able to power simple centralized kind of a front end types of functions with very robust decentralized backends without adding additional risks for the users. Besides decentralization, what do bridge builders need to consider to ensure that users are protected against, you know, some some of the big hacks that we've seen recently? Yeah. I mean, if you're building using interoperability protocol, you have to be smart about, uh, you know, what types of engineering practices you employ, right? So every time you're talking about security or robust systems, you want to make sure you're doing audits. You want to make sure you are uh, adding additional, like, rate limits or safeguards for your application code. You want to make sure you're running uh, bug bounties. All of those things are standard engineering practices that you want to continue using whatever system you're building, whether or not it's a blockchain, DeFi application, interoperability-based, you know, protocol application. You have to continue doing that. Um, but it is critical to kind of a start with the right base, which is this, you know, decentralized sort of backend, because that gives you kind of a, the most, um, you know, security to begin with, and you have to augment it with the right engineering practices around it. And lastly, you know, you came out on top of in this report. What kind of information was requested from you to deter to determine you as one of the top two uh, solutions? Yeah, so the, the Uniswap Foundation done really kind of great job kind of going through all the protocols and trying to understand how they work behind the scenes, right? Um, if it's a network, you know, how many validators support the network? Uh, what types of security models are there? Uh, what types of functions this network supports? You know, how do you deal with, uh, you know, emergencies uh, throughout the protocol? Um, and uh, we kind of went back and forth with the, uh, you know, uh, Uniswap Foundation. They asked uh, some of these questions. We gave them answers, and they looked at some of the code and the reports and things like that. So it's really well thought up, you know, uh, report. Kind of going back to their uh, kind of core uh, values that they have, which you know I do believe kind of stand around decentralization and being able to build kind of censorship-free products. Yeah, are you going to apologize right. for stealing Galen Moore from Coin from CoinDesk? Um, maybe on the next show, but not today. <laughs> <laughs> That's the important news. We need to hear yeah. from you. An apology. <laughs> um, nice. Sergey. You, you, yeah, you took Thank Galen. You. Uh, it was great to have him. Thank you very much for joining the show this morning. That was Axler CEO and co-founder Sergey Gorbanov.